Good evening, everybody from Disney Springs. Tonight, we are coming here to try Summer House on the Lake. It's been open for a little while now, and I've been holding out watching other people's reviews, but tonight we are gonna come and check it out. I do know they have like a cookie bar, so I think we're gonna check that out as well. But right now, we're gonna start with Disney Springs a little bit, maybe head over to World of Disney, show you if there's anything new over there, and then we'll head over to Summer House on the Lake. They do not take reservations, so I think it's just walk up, and I'm hoping it's not too busy. Last time we did an opening, here was for Eat by Manit. So that was uh, pretty easy to get into. I'm hoping tonight is kind of the same way. We did opt in to come down the Orange Garage way this time. We actually were heading over to Lime and then we diverted over to Orange because it is kind of over here around the corner. But because I wanted to start with World of Disney, now I'm thinking maybe it might have been a little bit smarter to actually start over at Lime Garage. It doesn't really matter. We're just out here hanging out. It is a Friday night. It is beautiful weather tonight as well. Unfortunately, it is a little overcasty. You can see some of the sky does look a little cloudy, but overall does feel great right now. As we're making our way over to Summer House right now, I do also want to point out that the crowds are extremely busy still here in Central Florida. I don't know when we're going to kind of subside from all of this. It does feel like we have not stopped with the busyness since literally December. I'm hoping come February at this point, since we are just about a week away, maybe that'll be a good time. But I know we have some race weekends and things like that, a few holidays, so I don't really know. but. I feel like as of now, the January time frame most people tell you is a good time to visit because crowds are low. Not the case. Over here at the Candy Cauldron, they're doing free samples right now. I've actually never seen this. So that is kind of cool. Also, you can tell that we're actually heading over to Summer House really quick. This is because I'm taking a thumbnail. So uh, we're gonna turn around here in just a minute, but I am about to take a thumbnail. And I guess we'll show you the front here while we're over here. These are maybe slushies. They're very cold. What did you get? Orange. Orange and, and blue? I think the Powerade though. Your Powerade? Mm. It's good. Can I try yours? Mm -hmm. Let me see. Mm. I think the blue's better. They're both pretty close, right? Which no. one do you like more? Blue? That's fine, you can have it. Uh, I do want to point out the size of this place is massive, by the way, because Right now, you can see the walls are down, but it was huge when it was being built. I just remember looking, I was like, this is gonna be a massive restaurant. So you can see it comes out here. It looks really nice as well. And then up front here, you can see there's some seating right along the edge. Inside, they have some seating back there. I think it goes all the way back there too. So we just checked the front and there is no wait currently. Again, lots and lots of seating here. It does look pretty busy overall, but it's pretty cool. So back here, it looks like you can kind of sit along the edge and kind of be on the little lake right here. And I don't know if that's why they ended up naming it that, I'm not too certain, but I'll try and show you along here. So if you could get one of these like corner spots, that's probably the best spot to sit. Again, just sit along the edge there as you just view the lake here and just see the boats and kind of just observe everything out there. Also Boathouse has some great seating. So I guess they're kind of the same there, but again, I'm very excited to try this out. Now let's head over to World of Disney, show you if there's anything new there, and then we'll head back here and go ahead and grab a bite to eat. All right, after quite the hike, we have made it over here to World of Disney. We did show some of the new merch over at Epcot and a few other places, but we'll see if there's anything that's like new, new. You guys are interested. Munchlings have been releasing a lot more merchandise outside of just the boxes. So they have that Disney Munchlings stand, which has the actual boxes there, and then the big plushes. But now they have like a lot of merch. So it looks like we have some mugs. Over here we have like a chopstick dish with like a little plate. Um, I'm guessing this is some sort of bowl itself. I feel like Munchlings have been popping off recently. Look at all of these Munchling just pieces, it's crazy. You have ornaments, you have keychains, you have little like bags with goodies in them, actual treats, backpacks, pens, it's crazy. Now here at World of Disney, typically the newest items go back here along this wall here. So I'm gonna come check it out. But as of now, it looks all a little generic and old. So I don't think anything is new here, but the seasonal stuff typically pops up right here. But it looks like we just have a lot of like Mickey Mouse items. Yeah, so you have like that same kind of look on all of these pieces here. 
So nothing too crazy here. I don't think there's much new here at World of Disney, so not gonna be too much shopping right now. I guess we'll head over to Summer House at this point because it does look to be all kind of old and the same. They have some new Star Wars merch, it actually looks like. So kind of these spirit jersey style. You have a little baby Grogu on there. It says Star Wars on the back. Let's see this one. Oh, this is like original. Oh, it's like fuzzy. 1977. Let's see over here. Choose your path. Star Wars on the back. Choose your path. So a few new pieces for Star Wars. That's kind of nice. I haven't seen too much of that. This actually has moved too. It used to be over in that corner. Now it's got its own little section over here. Well, we are right in front of the kids section, but this doesn't look like kids sizes. These look bigger. Oh, look at this little lounge fly. I haven't seen this yet. This is actually lounge fly or no? Oh, it is, yeah. That's kind of fun. It's a little Mandalorian one. What's down here? A little bag and then a, a hat. So that's kind of interesting. I didn't know they released this. I haven't seen this actually in the park. So if you guys haven't seen it yet and you like Mandalorian, some new launch flies. Do they sell this space crane, do you guys know? Because I love the little claw games. Let's see, is it over here? I don't think it is. I want that though. I want the space crane. Oh, wait a minute, they do have them. And it comes with all of these little aliens. That's awesome. How much does it cost? 55? I guess it's actually not the worst. But I think, can you actually play it? It looks like you can. I think you have to. Oh, yeah, fully right functional there. claw machine. Mama? Space crane. I might have to put it on my uh, birthday list or oh. Christmas. Yeah. As we are heading out of World of Disney, I didn't even see these for Valentine's Day. The new Starbucks tumblers here with a heart on them. And it looks like maybe some new ears or I don't know if those are totally new. That's and then you can get cool. it is, yeah, the Valentine's Day 2024 down there. Two hundred dollars, but you get Mickey and Minnie as dolls. they're like little yeah, I was gonna say their dolls are like I feel like I've never like, seen dolls where like plushes, but like they're dolls. Yeah, it looks very like old and authentic, but legit too. Certificate of verification. That's pretty cool. So it looks like there's 3,600 made, 3,610. All right, we are heading over to Summer House now. Again, incredibly crowded. I mean, you could just see how many people are just existing here at Springs. It is a lot of people, very, very busy. All right, we have made it back to Summer House on the Lake. Gonna go ahead, double check that there's no wait. It has been a little while now, not too much longer, but I'm hoping that we don't have to wait. And if we do, probably not too, too long. All right, we were told to come over here to the host stand. So it's kind of like there's almost two host stands. So I think this is the cookie bar here, because I do see order here, right there. So I think that's the cookie bar. And then I think everything else should be out this way. It looks like they have a regular bar here too. All right, we have this corner table. As we were walking up, I saw this empty table. This was like the line we were just in. So we get to sit right here on the corner. And Nicole said she wanted to be out here so we could people watch. So there we, we go. Got it. All right, so here is the menu if you guys are interested. I know you could probably find this online. So we won't stick with it for too, too long. Again, feel free to pause anywhere along the way. It does feel pretty standard as far as pricing goes. We did end up getting a starter here, which is the jalapeno cornbread, which is right over here. So we just got this and you can smell the jalapeno. We were originally gonna do these cheesy dream puffs and she said they were basically like cheesy bread, but we really like jalapeno cornbread. So we figured we would go ahead and opt for this. So that is what we are starting with. All right, for tonight, we are going to be trying out again the DJI mic, just to kind of hopefully have a little bit better audio here as we are eating and we don't have to kind of like keep putting the camera like totally in each other's face but what I do want to show you is a little bit around the restaurant right now so let's go ahead and take a lap so you guys can see what it really looks like here all right let's do a little montage here shall we Very jalapeno-y. 
I was gonna say, I could definitely smell the jalapeno just like sitting at the table. So without butter, give us them thoughts. You guys will have to let us know how the audio is. Again, we're trying a new method here. So this is definitely like, um, you get the heat from the jalapeno. Okay. And they're a little mushy in my opinion. Like not to be negative immediately, but it's a little soggy and a little mushy. Hmm. Let's try the butter. How's the actual flavor though? It's kind of green peppery. Green peppery? Yeah, over, almost a little overwhelming. You'll have to try yourself and let me know. Okay. Um, the butter's good. All right, so it does feel like, kind of like moist and like wet in there. Yeah, it's got a little bit of like mushiness to it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good though, I think. You definitely get the jalapeno. I'm not gonna kind of like cornbread though. You know, it's like kind of tastes more like jalapeno bread. I can agree. I, I get the I get the corn pieces in there. Like there's like corn chunks, but I don't know if I would necessarily say like it's a cornbread. But I actually like it, and I like the spice to it. I feel like you are getting heat in this one. Definitely heat. Yeah, like I feel like sometimes with jalapeno stuff. You get the flavor, but not necessarily the heat. This one has heat. It's not the hottest thing as far as jalapenos go, but I think it's a good flavor. The butter though, thoughts? I actually like it without the butter. Oh, I like the butter. I think it changes the flavor profile and not something that I totally love. I think I think on its own, it's, it's very good. I actually really like that. The butter, I think, completely turned into something different. All right, next up is going to be the, I think, is it hand breaded? chicken breast or, or picnic it's basket? Picnic fried chicken basket. All right, well these look interesting because they look kind of just like tenders, but they have a lot of seasoning on them. It does have a little ketchup packet thing here, like a little uh, sauce of it. And then you have, I think this is gonna be barbecue. Yeah, that's some sort of barbecue. So let's go ahead and try these out. The fries look pretty good. I like the like thinner fries, almost reminds me of like a McDonald's fry. They smell good. Are they like super breaded? Yeah, very thick breading, which I know you don't love. No, I think typically with chicken, I prefer a little bit lighter on the uh, batter there. They use like their own seasoning and stuff though. Oh. That's good. Is it? It's so flavorful. The chicken is so moist. That is good. Is it? Awesome. You want to try with some of the sauce here? Mm -mm -mm. Why don't you try the barbecue down there and see if how that wow. goes. I guess we made a good choice then. We did, but it's definitely chicken tenders. You think it's just chicken tenders? Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Maybe just the way that they did it, instead of getting like... A breast? Yeah, you, you just more sliced up. Let's see what it looks like there, huh? I mean, it's moist, that chicken. Can you see that here at all? I can see it on your fork, it looks great. Not a fan of the barbecue? I wouldn't even call it barbecue. It's got like a chipotle kind of flavor to it, right? It has like no flavor in my opinion. Really? Yeah, it's very, very flavorless. I'm a little bummed out that that is lacking so little flavor when the chicken is so good. But that's just my opinion and it's just the sauce. Also, the fries are pretty good. I don't know what it is, but I feel like a lot of fries from restaurants almost have like a fishy flavor to them, so I don't know if they're cooked in the same oil as fish is, and maybe that's where it comes from, but I feel like these have a little hint of it. Not as bad as I've had in the past, but these definitely have a little bit of a hint of like fishiness to them. And I always get that, I feel like, with fries from restaurants. No idea what it is. If you guys know, let me know. All right, last up is the steak frites, I think is how it's pronounced, and we're gonna go ahead. I thought it was supposed to be cut, but maybe not, so we're gonna go ahead and get this cut. I don't know if we should use this lime. Looks like we get, I don't know, some sort of like mustard or mayo. I don't know what that sauce is, but we'll get this cut up. All right, we're gonna try it out. It does have good color. That is good. Right? The char is good, the salt's good. Yeah, they're using like a flaky salt or something on top. It tastes really good. I'm gonna try it with this. I think it's a garlic aioli. A garlic aioli. It's very, aioli it's very mayo -y. So this one out of the butter, and add sauce and then this i think this is the, the least flavorful i think i can agree with you on that I, it does feel like it's kind of missing some flavor there 
there's definitely some sort of something on its own it's pretty potent actually though i get a very heavy like garlic almost lemon but having it on the steak i really didn't get too much flavor so maybe you gotta like drench it maybe i gotta try like really really soak try the it lime. oh yeah i should try the lime let's do that real quick all right put a little bit of lime juice on there kind of just tastes like lime on a steak <laughs> Well, there you go. That is our ranking for our entrees here. And I guess technically it's an entree, entree, and an appetizer. I think we're gonna try out one of those cookies here in just a little bit. I walked over that the cookies are massive, by the way, and I wonder if it's gonna compete with Gideon's because I feel like Gideon's has had like a stranglehold here on uh, just like springs in general. I feel like everyone rants and raves about a Gideon's cookie and their cookies are phenomenal. All right, we are all finished up. What we're gonna do now is actually head over here to the cookie bar, which is right next door. I think you can actually order from your table, but we figured let's go ahead and take a look at the cookies themselves. I feel like you can read something, but I feel like you've got to see it, right? Especially because it's a cookie bar. They have a lot of merchandise here at the Summer House, and it is a California-themed restaurant. We did hear that. I guess I should point that out as well, but you have some bucket hats up there. You have some of these shirts here. Kind of crazy. And then you have, like, mugs and tumblers. Is there a poncho? There is a poncho. It's nice. It's the only one. I feel like we should get it. I know. Let's Can see I what else we have. One? So here's more of the mugs. You can get wine glasses, it looks like, candles, more mugs. Can you get the plant? No, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, if you guys are interested, here are the cookie options here. They do have some cakes up there, just regular desserts. And those are some of your cookie options. Then you have some coffee as well. Funny enough, I think the cookies are only five bucks a piece, which is cheaper than Gideon's technically. All right, here are some of the cookies already. So we have the peanut butter one. Looks like it has like a peanut buttery like middle too, like raw peanuts. A chocolate chip here on the end, the kind of classic chocolate walnut. In the back, it looks like you have a gluten free. They're like huge. I'm all gluten free. They're crazy. You have M and M cookies. Double chocolate cloud, birthday cake, oh, okay. oatmeal um, scotchy, pinky. Yeah, I guess like a classic. I don't know. A few more options down here: creamsicle, apple, oat, lemon cookies, sea salt, chocolate chip. Let's see on the other side of the bowl here, we do have a vegan snickerdoodle, fudge bomb, crispy rice chocolate chip. What do we have in back? Ginger snap. It's a lot of cookies out here. And they are pretty big. And I guess I said five dollars. They range anywhere from like four ninety-five to five forty-five. Oh wow, over here, look at this. More areas to sit too. I think this might be just for the cookie bar. No, or maybe regular seating. There's a lot of seating here. All right, we're gonna go find a spot to try our two cookies out. Again, we went with a chocolate chip and the pinky. I feel like those are two like kind of iconic flavors in a sense. Uh, but I do want to talk a little bit about Summer House on the lake here. I think. The food was good, and I think it wasn't anything that I felt was like overwhelmingly like great. For the two of us, for two entrees and an appetizer, it came out to $82 after tax. They do accept annual pass discount, which saved us about $8, 10%. So I think for me, it was pretty pricey. Our cornbread was like $13, our chicken was like $25, and again, I mean, they were kind of just tenders and then the steak was like 40. So it just, it felt a little pricey and it wasn't again like the best food. It definitely was tasty and I think overall like it was good. The atmosphere in there is phenomenal. I think that is something that if you just wanna like go hang out at a restaurant, that's definitely a place to go. I feel like it's just got a good vibe to it. But I would say the flavors were good and I would recommend them. But I don't know if I would say the price was quite what I was looking for. What do you think about it, Nicole? Um, I agree with what you were saying. I think the food was good. I enjoyed the chicken tenders. But I don't think they were like worth $25. I don't think the steak was worth $40. So I think it was good food. I don't think it was $80 food, if that makes sense. And there you go. So good, but $80 good? I don't know. Let's try these cookies out though. I think I've got a spot over here that we can finally try them. 
Now we're just trying a quick bite because I think both of us are pretty stuffed from the meal. And I feel like you get a decent amount, but also I feel like French fries is kind of like a cop out in a sense too. Like, don't you feel like you could probably get like potatoes or like something yeah, a little bit more salad unique? salad or veggie. Yeah, and yeah. I guess to be fair, some of them had that, but I do the feel like- was like the only side kind of. Yeah, which is kind of unique. I don't know. All right, either way, here is the chocolate chip cookie. The classic. Go ahead, let us know what you think. Also, we switched back to our other microphone, so I don't know how the audio sounds. It looked like it came a nice uh, soft cookie there. That's nice. Before we ask about Gideon's, let's just get a general rating. Feel good? Tasty? It's good, but it's very cakey, like dense. I know Gideon's, they say the secret is butter. They say they don't have a lot of sugar, but they have a lot of butter. But I, I was hearing people said like these were very sugary. Like I tasted more sugary than they did buttery, where I feel like, you know, getting to that unique flavor. They're very cakey to me. Okay. Um, and then, how does it compare to a Gideon's cookie? They're like completely different flavors. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, again, for the third time, and you'll see it when you try it, like, these are very, like, thick, and they just remind me of, like, a, a cake flour cookie. And does that make them more dense, I think, maybe? Um, they're not nearly as good. But it's not a bad cookie. But I'd probably want to try something else over the chocolate chip again. All right, we're going to try this out now. It smells like a chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> yeah, so it's definitely more dense. Mm -hmm. Almost a little undercooked. I feel like that's what people talk oh, about yeah. Gideon's, is that it's a little undercooked, where this feels a little chewy. Not as good as a Gideon's cookie. Good flavor, soft cookie. I feel like it would probably go good with like the ice cream they talk about you can get at Alamo. mode. Yeah. I feel like that would be pretty good with this. But if it's between the two of them, I think I'm taking Gideon's 10 out of 10 times. All right, we have one more cookie to try here. This is the pink, what is it, pinky? The pinky. The pinky. I feel like this is like the iconic flavor for crumble, I think. Oh, yes, right? or not anymore. It's like a rotating flavor now. Yeah, but either way, we're gonna try out the pinky. Mm, big, do you guys see that? How heavy that is. That's good. This reminds me of like a Mrs. Fields like mall sugar cookie. Um, it's good. Gideon's doesn't have anything like this. Oh my god. It's heavy and like greasy. Oh my god. Okay, I like the bottom. I'm break. All right, this thing is like massive. By the way, way more, uh, way more heavy than the chocolate chip. Can you guys see? I don't know if it's focusing there or not. Let's put it in front of me. I don't know. It's the the amount of frosting on this thing. It's almost the size of the cookie itself. Here you go. Oh my god. That is a ton of frosting. It's good. You know, she's right. Gideon's doesn't have any cookies that have frosting on them. So it is unique to it. I think I still prefer Gideon's cookies all day, but it is good, but Holy cow, I guarantee you that is super sugary. I mean, we're talking like half an inch to like an inch of frosting on that thing. It's literally, I, I, I need to see if There's I can show it to you. I mean, it's crazy. Can you guys see that? There's like our teeth marks from the bite, but like, I mean, the amount of frosting on there, I feel like it's it's more than like the cookie it looks like mm -hmm. some, like in the middle. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, you can like so, poke it. It's like yeah, it's, it's ridiculous how much frosting they put on there. So it is good. I do feel like there's a lot of like lifting from the frosting though, because there's so much where like, I don't get a ton of like the cookie flavor. No, I'm getting frosting. Yeah, yeah. so it's good. And I definitely think this one is a little bit better than the chocolate chip. Yes. And I'm excited to try some of the other flavors, but I don't know if I could recommend this over Gideon's. I can't. No. No. All right, and that is going to do it for our review of Summer House on the Lake. Again, the cookies felt worth it. Um, $5 a cookie or so. They're big cookies, pretty flavorful. Again, not a Gideon's cookie, but it's still a good cookie at the end of the day. But for the actual restaurant, I don't know if I could totally recommend it if you're wanting to like get like the best bang for your buck. The food itself was good. I just, I don't know if it was $80 good. I feel like we spent a lot of money and it was good food, but it's not like it was anything I hadn't had before. So I would say for that reason, I don't know if I would totally recommend it. I think it is a very good vibe in there and I would definitely check it out if you guys are interested in that. But I would say the food is, it's, it's good. 
it's just it's expensive it's an expensive restaurant and you are gonna kind of have to pay a little bit more unfortunately but again with AP discounts save 10% so you know, it was ultimately like 74 between the two of us for two entrees and an appetizer. So you'll have to make a decision on your own if you feel that is worth it. And again, I would say the whole meal was probably about a seven and a half to eight out of 10 if you want me to give it about a value. Either way, if you guys did enjoy today's video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more content like this, consider subscribing to the channel. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.